Okay, today we're going to implement this blog filtering functionality. So uh, the way it works is we can select multiple of these filters and the results below will be the combination of the selected filters. Okay, let's go through how to implement this. All right, uh, so we're using index.php to output our blog post and let's jump straight to the filters. So we're using get template part to get the filters, which is in this file here. And we're getting the terms, we're getting uh, the, setting the taxonomy to be category and we're gonna hide, hide the empty ones. Now, the main functionality of these filters is it, it's a form and every time a button is clicked in this form the form is submitted and it's returning the results via Ajax so that's how it works so we use we set we get we get terms up here and then we loop through terms down here and then in our checkbox we use the values we use the term values so these checkboxes uh, on the so this is the for each is outputting all the checkboxes for us and then it's adding it's populating the inputs with um, the type of checkbox uh, the name is set to term square bracket square bracket so that's for that's to an accept to accept an array uh, the value is going to be term value the term value slug and the um and these two values are going to be sent for processing once the form is submitted the id is here to connect the ID to the label. So the label is also set on the, the for element here is set to the term taxonomy ID as is the ID of the input itself. And that's it. So this loop runs, it outputs the buttons with these values. The next part to this functionality that we want to implement is the execution of the query. So when this filter is selected and this filter is selected, combining cat1 and cat4 into a custom query and outputting it on the page. So that's the part we're looking at now is the query part. And for that, we're using pre get posts, which is a WordPress function. So I've got my pre get post function in my functions.php file and the way pre get post works is it takes the query that's already running that WordPress is already running so then it takes the main query and it adds whatever parameters you want to add into it so you so you're modifying the query rather than creating a whole new query so in this case where we're only going to run this query if it's the main query and if it's not the admin. So we don't want to affect any uh, data in the admin or we don't want to affect any you know, loops that are running uh, to generate comments or anything like that. So, we, so we're targeting the main query and we're inject injecting some new parameters into it. Uh, and we're also testing to see if uh, the um, checkboxes have any uh, values in them. Uh, and if if so that means if the checkboxes are selected so and if they are selected then we want to we want to get the term that it has been populated with and we're creating a tax query here uh, using the taxonomy of category using the slug as the field and we're using the value of the selected checkbox as the terms 
uh, and that is being set into the into the query that's going to run on the page. The final piece of functionality we need to implement is the is processing the form with Ajax. So if we take a look at the markup here, and we see we have all our posts are wrapped in this container here, blog post wrapper. And when we click the filters, the data in the blog post wrapper changes. So here we're saying, uh, so filter post is the idea of the form. And we're saying on change of the checkbox element, run this function. And this meaning the checkbox that was selected, uh, bind its parent and change the class to checked. And that way we can style style the checkbox element. Uh, we're also running uh, on the same element, uh, find the closest form and submit and run this function called submit, which is going to process the form for us when the checkbox are selected. When the form does submit, prevent the form from reloading the page and run a function called on submit, which is down here. And now on submit is uh, our Ajax function. So run the Ajax function. And I think the key, we're running the Ajax function on with the URL of get URL, which is up here, which is set to be the current page that we're on. So the blog page, so run this function on the blog page. Return the results on the blog page. Now this parameter here in the Ajax function data, uh, this this is where all the form data is, all the checkbox data, the name and the values are, are stored in here. If I, I've console console logged it out here in the before send function so we can see an example of what's happening and if I select these elements here go to message why is that not working nothing's working oh because I stuffed up something all right so yeah here we go so here we're outputting term equals cat dash one and here we're outputting term equals cat dash one and term equals cat dash two so here's all so that's all the form data that we've that, that we've got stored so that's what happens when we console.log form.serialize so that's the data in there uh, obviously this is not needed this function here at all we don't need that it will still work without it okay so and then now it's now we run now the Ajax is doing the success parameter and uh, this is all about finding the wrapper uh, getting the HTML data uh, if there is new data then get rid of that uh, if there is new data then populate the blog post wrapper with the new data else if there is no new data then just keep the same data keep the same HTML it will still reload it'll just keep the same HTML let me know if you have any questions let me know if you have any improvements on this technique and thank you so much for watching